Welcome to Food for Thought. I'm Colleen Patrick Goudreau from Compassionate Cooks. I founded Compassionate Cooks in order to help empower people to make informed food choices and to debunk myths about vegetarianism. There are a lot of questions about vegetarianism and animal rights and a lot of misinformation out there. You can learn more about who we are and what we do by visiting our website, compassionatecooks.com. Right now, let's talk about eggs. One question a lot of people ask once they start thinking about animal products is, what's wrong with eating eggs if the animal isn't killed? It's a good question. The short answer is the animals are killed for this product ultimately, but the longer answer is a bit more involved, and it's an answer the egg industry certainly doesn't want revealed. It spends millions of dollars to keep us all in the dark about this product. You know, I think we tend to think that animal products are here solely for our purpose, that their milk and their eggs and their flesh are here for us to drink and eat. But obviously, there's a lot more going on than than that. You know, the chicken's egg, like cow's milk, is part of the female reproductive system. Hens lay eggs for the purpose of having chicks. The egg in chickens is not unlike the egg of any female. It's the byproduct of the menstrual cycle. Unfertilized eggs, you know, drop out of the uterus and out of the body. And if they're fertilized, they would produce embryos that would grow into babies, etc. It's quite a different picture than the egg industry paints. They don't really talk about it as the product of a menstrual cycle of a chicken. I know it doesn't sound very appetizing, but uh, the average American consumes about 250 eggs a year. Total U.S. production in 2004, by the way, was over 76 billion eggs eggs. And right now there are 291 million hens being used for their egg protection. That's one hen for every man, woman, and child in this country. Uh, You'd think we'd see the hens. You'd think we'd see them around somewhere with that many. Of course, we don't see them. The egg industry doesn't want us to see them. So they're kept in the dark, just like we are. But unfortunately, they have it a lot worse than we do. They're kept literally in the dark in windowless sheds confined to what are called battery cages. You've probably heard of battery cages by now. These are tiny wire cages that measure roughly 18 by 20 inches. If you just put your hands out and imagine the size of that space and within these cages between five and 11 hens are confined. Now, certain animal groups had pressured some fast food restaurants to change the standards. And so in the best case scenario, there'll be five hens to one of these cages. But even in that best case scenario, each hen spends her life in a crowded space about the size of a file drawer with four other hens, and she's unable to lift even one single wing. And these are animals that love to sit in the sun. Obviously, they want to stretch their limbs. They want to stretch their wings. They have legs to walk. They have wings uh, to stretch, and they love to dust bathe, and they are denied all of these basic needs. These cages are stacked one on top of the other, so the waste of the chickens above fall onto the birds in the lower cages. And you can imagine the stench of ammonia and feces in these sheds. And no human really ever enters because everything's mechanized and automated. So when a cage mate dies, they're just left there, and the survivors have to live with their dead or dying cage mates. The light in these sheds is constantly manipulated to maximize egg production. And chickens are often starved for as long as 14 days at a time to shock their bodies into another egg laying cycle. This is called forced molting. And it's illegal in some countries because it's considered so cruel. One point I didn't mention, which I'm sure you've heard of, as if this isn't bad enough, is that battery cage hens have a portion of their beak cut off with a searing hot blade and no painkillers are used. Many birds die from dehydration. The pain is so bad they can't eat. And of course, because of weakened immune systems as well. Even before this, at practically the first day of their lives at the hatcheries. Now, this is before the chickens come to the egg laying facilities. They're all born in a hatchery. And obviously some born will be male and some will be female. Well, the male chicks are worthless to this industry because this industry depends on the female reproductive system. So they are literally thrown away. They are tossed into trash bags to suffocate or they're thrown into high speed grinders called macerators. And this happens while they're still alive. After two years of being in these cages, the hen's bodies as you can imagine, are so exhausted and so depleted of calcium, their egg production drops and now they're no longer useful. So they're considered spent 
by the industry and they're shipped to slaughter. So as I said before, all chickens, all cows, all animals, when they're no longer productive and they're no longer profitable, quote unquote, they are sent to slaughter. Now birds or poultry, in their words, are not covered by the Humane Slaughter Act. So even at the very end, they're denied any kind of basic humane treatment. And by the way, rabbits are also categorized as poultry by the USDA. So they're not covered under this Humane Slaughter Act as unenforced as that act is. They're not covered either. By the time they're sent to slaughter, roughly 29% of the hens are suffering from broken bones. Their bodies are so damaged that their flesh is generally used only for chicken soup or pet food or canned meat, much of which goes to the National School Lunch Program. So I know what you're thinking now. You're probably asking, what about free-range eggs? The free-range label, which has become a very clever marketing ploy, is not subject to any USDA regulations. It basically doesn't mean very much. All free-range hens, keep in mind, come from the same hatcheries where those males are killed. And again, in the end, all the hens are killed, regardless of where they come from. So we'll cover that issue another time. But there is hope. I hope you're still with me. I promise you there is hope. Just because we've been taught that eating eggs is essential, that doesn't mean they are. I personally revel in the fact that we can make new choices once we find out we are causing harm. And I don't believe any of us wake up wanting to cause harm to another being. I just don't think that's what's happening. I think we're just really uninformed. And there are so many food choices out there for us. It's ridiculous. We're incredibly spoiled. It's just another one of those habits that have been ingrained in us by these industries that make billions of dollars off of the broken backs of billions of animals and from our wallets, millions of uninformed consumers. So we'll talk about those food options another time and all the wonderful egg replacers you can use in baked goods. And most of the time, you don't even need eggs at all. You can visit CompassionateCooks.com to start building your cookbook and reading about more of these issues at our website. I just wanted to end with this thought. It's a quote from Gretchen Weiler. She founded the Genesis Awards, which are like animal-friendly Oscars, where celebrity presenters give awards to members of the major media who have exposed animal cruelty. She says, I live to see the day when animals have the right to run if they have legs, have the right to swim if they have fins, have the right to fly if they have wings. I love that quote because basically it's what we're asking for when we ask for animal rights. We are just asking that they have the right to live free of pain and suffering. And I don't think that's too much to ask. Anyway, thanks for listening. Mm-hmm.